Yeah, we cooking now. Cooking now. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, this is episode seven. I'm slowly but surely getting these things out. What's going on, Vernon Stone in the building? Uh, Asiatic Soldier, what's going on? Been a hell of a weekend. Hell of a weekend. Swinging a sledgehammer, people. Uh, replacing chain setups from Axel to the dog. Felt like I was working on the damn chain gang, man. It's almost done. It's almost done. Just like everything in these dogs, you got to be a bulldog about it. Go ahead, scratch, and get it done. Huh. Bear with me one second. I'm just trying to get all my little bearings together and stuff. Goldstone, what's up? Cecil Jackson, appreciate everybody swinging through on this lovely Thursday night. You chilling with the Thompson man. Let me get a lot of good feedback from um our lives. I want to appreciate everybody for swinging through the support for the channel. Greatly appreciate it. A lot of people reaching out to me via email. Some people, um, even found my old number, my old videos with my number in it, and gave me a call and just wanted to say they appreciate what we was doing with the channel and the lives and the information for the young brothers and the dogs. I want to say appreciate all the love and support. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. Also, as far as emails and people contacting me and stuff, I'm, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to enlighten um, a lot of people. I do not run Pure Boyle's dogs. Just so people know. Appreciate Ryan Barker for swinging through. Benny, what's going on? Appreciate y'all guys for swinging through. I do not run Pure Boyle's dogs. Boyle's dogs are a key ingredient in what I put together. It was never my goal in life to run Pure Boyle's dogs. There's some fanciers that love that blood and that's what their yard is predicated solely off of. Mine's is a little different. I run my boils blood, but I use out. I use the Sin City, Harry Hargrove blood as an out. I use the termite blood as an out. I also use the sorrels blood as an out. So a lot of the dogs that you see formulated from my camp, depending on what breeding I'm putting together is going to be have a quarter of that in it or 50% roughly, depending on what time of the year you catch me and what breedings I'm pairing together. So just for everybody who's inquiring or contacting me about the pure boil stuff, that's not what I run. What's going on, Mr. PBC? Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Oh, that's good. I was that's just um, I was just talking to the chat, you know, since we started the lives and stuff. Shout out on um, Randall Cheek swinging through. Appreciate you guys swinging through the chat. Um, what you call? I was just enlightening the a lot of people contacting me about the pure boils dogs. I was just letting people know I do not run pure boils dogs. That's not my thing. I you I use the Harry Hargrove, the Sin City Blood. The termite blood, the sorrel's blood. I use the old Eli stuff, the Toby, showgirl type of dogs. Those are the things that's in my dogs. So that's what I run. 
Now I have bred hustle man to a pure boils dog to create mailman. That would be like a three quarter dog if you wanted to break it down, but there's still a quarter out. And what I'm t- telling people about this is that's my little recipes that I use. Those are Thompson's ingredients to make Thompson's dogs. The boils blood that I'm using is via through man, hustle man. Before that, it was Black Reggie. If you're just going down some of those lines, the Bad Frank blood, I'm not heavy on it. I use a minute bit of it in my dogs, but this is uh, the sauce that I use. Um, I guess we could start this off. You had a conversation since I'm talking about the pure stuff and how we um voicing things and how they're put together. Um, feel, feel free to share, bro. I think you on mute, Fred. You got to hit that little mic button in that corner. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. No, you good to go, brother. Yeah, I had a conversation with um, um Ronald this week. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times uh, we say balls, dogs, right? But uh, if we didn't get it from the man, Ronald Balls himself, uh, you really don't have a bull's dog. You know, uh, all of us going to put our, uh, you know, some of us get dogs as soon as we get it, we out it. Uh, some of us look at the pedigree and say, well, I'm going to add more Bolio to it. Some of us want to add more Eli. Some of us go, uh, you know, like, uh, Ronald and um, the mountain man used to breed together. He said, well, I'm going to put that um, Jeep Rascal to it, you know? So, Ooh. you know, there's several different ways. And, you know, you got the Eli influence that uh, the Cherokee chief dogs and the oiler dogs and the jazz man, you know, the boat action dogs, you know, uh, Raptor and all them dogs. Uh, you got dogs that came down to more on the Eli side of the dogs. And you only see that a lot with the Dirty Mary dogs. So it's all according to what kind of dogs you, you're going to be having. You know, and not only that, when people say they want a pure boys dog, you know, if you look in the pedigree, a lot of times, even when you say a pure boys dog, you look at a dog that was predicated on a dog that Ronald seen that he liked. It. And I'm going to say this. On the conversation that me and him was having, you know, there's a lot of people out here that say, well, Ronald really didn't have nothing but some Pat Patrick dogs. But, you know, yeah. when I talked to Ronald this week, he said, no, not so, because one thing Pat Patrick didn't like was an Eli dog, you know, and he would never breed a Bolio dog to an Eli dog because that's what, that just wasn't his flavor. But oh. I'm gonna say to me that that he would breed an Eli dog to a Bolio dog because it worked for his program. So. If you move this scale all the way up to 2023, 20, you got to look at the dogs that's in front of you today and you got to breed the dogs for what you see the day that's going to that's gonna make a better dog for you today, not yesteryear. You know, you're always looking at the old dogs. It's good to look at the old dogs just to get the great foundation that you need of understanding. But as far as looking at the old dogs trying to capture what you had years ago in the dogs of the day, that's going to be kind of like uh, shooting in the wind because these dogs been so crossed together now and the, the pot has been stirred so much. You got different bloods. And, and a lot of people jump off the porch and they believe what they see on Pets Online. But, and do you know 
how many dishonest people is out here with these dogs, man. And that's why, you know, me and Thompson is here trying to just have a little bit of podcast for guys that's just getting into these dogs, trying to, you know, do something that you like doing. I hope so. It's just doing something you like doing, you know. But some people got their reasons for getting into the dogs. You know, it's a hustle, you know, whatever it may be. But yeah, you you can be green no matter how you look at it, you know. Uh, you know, I was green before. So the thing was, I didn't want to stay green. You know, I wanted to grow up and become uh, become something in these dogs in which it wouldn't have never happened being lazy. It wouldn't have never happened if I wouldn't have did my due diligence about, you know, turning over rocks and turning over whatever I had to turn over to get to the place that I'm, I'm at today. I mean, it's not um, easy. And, you know, I met a lot of good people along the way. And, I'm, and look, trust me, I didn't lo- I've met a lot of people that you don't want to be associated with, period. I mean, and, and you're going to have to pick and choose, you know. I, I, I seen a comment this week. We sit here and we call dogs all the time. We're talking about we need to call these dogs. But some of the people that you hang around and people that you associate your with, yourself with, you need to start culling them too. Woo! Reds on the road, people. He came out the gate swing. But um, I want to emphasize um, what you alluded to with what you just said. This um podcast was predicated for the newer people coming into dogs. Young brothers. I, I sat on these, these lives and I told you guys, you know, we kind of lose track of time. It's 2023. There's people that was born in 2002, 2003 that are just now getting into these dogs. 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds. This was, um, was primarily set up to, to educate them on the wrong turns that can be made, the bad decisions that can be possibly made, the lookouts, the ways to protect your dogs. You know, everybody wants to sell dogs, but can you actually protect your dogs? Because you can't sell something that you don't have that is confiscated from you and taken from you. So this is what this podcast is primarily set up for. It may not be in the demographic of seasoned dogmen. There's a lot of knowledge that Mr. Fred has and a lot of knowledge that I have. But I'm going to ask Mr. Fred a question. Are you retired in dogs, Fred? No, I'm not retired in dogs. And you don't- I'm not retired in dogs. So certain information <laughs> is not privily for people that are actively in dogs. Not because yeah. me and him are doing anything wrong. It's just the fact that we live in a society now of what you put out is what you're going to be judged by. And you've got to be cognizant of that dealing in, especially with this breed of dog in 2023. Because it's been, it's been documented in stone the way these laws are and the way these people are handling certain situations, they rather see these dogs dead than your ass have. Them. And once we all get to that conclusion that they will take your dogs and kill them and rather that be the route than you own them. So this is why things are the way they are. So like I said, this may not be for seasoned dogmen and it wasn't intended for seasoned dogmen. We will have some information here that we share home remedies, little things like that. But as far as breaking down things into really severe things, because some of these chemicals that we discussed, they are veterinary prescribed. You're not supposed to have them unless the vet prescribed them to you. You know, the medicine has been a huge issue with these, a lot of these raised people who have done nothing wrong, but they're in possession of these medicines. And some of this stuff is not stuff that you can buy over the counter. So keep all of these things in mind. This is how they're playing game. This is how they're playing ball in 2023. So this is what the podcast was set up for. And I'm going to repeat that again for everybody. It's for the young guys coming in. Um, Fred, you had something you wanted to add on? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, if no I did. you're fine. Um, I just wanted to say spade and neuter is the way to go if you're not serious about these dogs. 
These dogs need to be fed. These dogs need to be in a clean area. These dogs need to have a good dog house. Some places are cold. Some places are wet. Some, I mean, you got to think about where the dog's going to be at. If you can't provide that, don't get into the dog, bro. I mean, if you're not going to, I mean, I, I know guys, they get in the dogs, they so clean. They, they can't stand getting dirty. And I know how, Thompson, you was out there today, early this morning when you were talking to me. And, <laughs> and I know I get dirty, bro. You know? <laughs> and I know some dog men that's been into these dogs for 45 years or better. And look, they get their hands dirty, bro. And it ain't no, it's a dirty job if you're going to really do it, man. Uh, especially if you got a lot of dogs. And the thing about having a lot of dogs, if you can't afford it, don't do it. I mean, don't do it. I mean, because I'm going to tell you right now, everything is going through the roof. Everything. And you you come out here saying you want a pure bulls dog, especially, you know, you look at me and Thompson, right? Thompson always knew that I had the bulls dog, and I had, I had a lot of it pure. Now, only reason I had a lot of it pure because I was hanging out with guys that had pure boys dogs. I mean, they was going through them like potato chips. But the thing was, I wanted to, like, save a few of these guys. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be Mr. Save-A-Lot. <laughs> and that's that's just who I was, you know? And uh, mm -hmm. I, I got my hand on a few of them. And then I got my hand on some more and, and some more. But I took care of what I had. You know what I mean? And, and, mm -hmm. and you know... A lot of people that have these dogs now, uh, you look at the way Thompson is, the uh, way Brown Kennel, the way I am, a, a few guys that's around me, you know, we guys that really work on having the best of the best, you know what I mean? And the thing is, if you're going to have good dogs, you got to put, your dogs are going to be a reflection of who you are. I mean, mm. if you're not shining, they're not going to shine, you know. And uh, we got to take pride in what we do with these animals because the animals come here and it, it, it's us that bring them into the situation that they're in. If you ain't got nothing to offer the animal, don't get the animal. Spade and neuter. That's why they got that there, you know, and uh, just have one dog and just be out. Don't don't go through all this having a bunch of dogs and don't take care of the dogs because you make it bad for all the other dog men that do got dogs and do take care of the animals. And, you know, I, I just hate to see how things are in, in 2023 because some guys get dogs and they into it for about six months maybe eight months, and then everything started going downhill. Next thing you know, oh, I got out of dogs. But what happened to the dogs, you know? You know, who knows? Be a, be, start off hobby. Hobby level, and, and I still operate on that level, you know? Acquire a dog and feel it out, you know? It's, everybody's trying to do things extremely fast. And there's nothing fast that occurs in these dogs, and I constantly say, "Man, patience." By, by the time you get one dog, especially if you buy it as a puppy, that's at least two years of you bonding with that dog to even really know what that dog is about. These dogs change just like children change sometimes. Me per se, I like stuff that stays the same, like I always preach, but they do change personality-wise as they mature. They may look totally different than they looked as a puppy. They may act totally different than they did as a puppy. All of this patient, all of this stuff is patient. I mean, really make a true assessment because you're not wasting anybody's time and money but your own. So if you don't give these animals a fair shake to make a fair assessment of what you want to do, you're just pissing in the wind, as Fred alluded to. You're wasting your time. You can accumulate more dogs on top of more dogs, which means these are more assessments you have to make on more animals. 
And if you couldn't make a proper assessment on one, why would you think you could make assessments on 15 or 10 or 20 or whatever number you want to pull out a hat? You, it, it's patient wise. Take your time and move forward. It's not a race. Don't be a fool with money because fools with money get separated from it. Because Mr. Fred alluded to in this so far, there's a lot of good people in these dogs. I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of good people, young and old, good hearts. I mean, all about the dogs, all about everything about the dogs and genuine with it. But then there's a lot of people who are not like that. And they see you with your money and they see a big fool sign on your forehead when you come walking up. And they will take advantage of you. They will, they will take full advantage of you for the young guys starting to purchase dogs. They look at a fool. As soon as you drive off in the car with that puppy, another sucker's born and they keep it moving. And they don't think they're not going to answer the phone for you after that transaction. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to give you any information. Buy. And that's their God-given right to because after the transaction is, I sold you a puppy. I didn't sell you a puppy and a book of knowledge to go with it. You paid for a puppy. And some people will do you like that, even down to full-grown dogs. You think you're, you, you think you're hopscotching something by grabbing a full-grown dog. And that may be the worst-case scenario for you because you don't know what that dog done been through, how he was raised up, none of that. And there's a reason probably why they're getting rid of that dog. But here you go, young Joe Blow, you don't know anything. You don't know any questions. That dog's parents isn't on site. He doesn't have papers. You done, he done told you the dog costs $1,000, but when you pull up, oh, you could get it for five without the papers. Hey, your goofy ass, oh, I'm saving $500. Now, there's no record for that dog to be traced back to him without the papers. So he could still do some straight bullshit, and it's no word again says. There ain't there's wow. no contract. There's no documentation with his name on it. Oh Lord. I mean this shit can get real deep if we're gonna have start having some of these conversations. But this I, is how I, a, lot, a lot of you young guys get taken advantage of. Hey, you just I'm just telling you, I've seen it. Just scratching the surface now. I'm telling you. Hey, that's just one scenario. But it's me that's just one scenario. <laughs> it's <minute>. one. <laughs> Man, hey, we could be here for some hours telling some of those stories. <laughs> I got to shout out a lot of people in the chat. Um, more Keith, shout out. I appreciate you swinging through, brother. Impact Kennels, I appreciate you for swinging through. Damian Williams, Dirty Glove Kennels, Lay Marshall, AQ Henry's Kennels, IDT Kennel Up, Martinez Game Dogs. Appreciate all of y'all swinging through and then enjoying the chat with us on this lovely Thursday. Um, I guess we, we broke off that little first part of our, our podcast. Um, you were, It was brought to my attention since we was already alluding on, on people being dishonest in these dogs and things of that nature. We caught up last week on the stud dogs, and I kind of went off into my little um, OCD rant about how I don't stud dogs out, and that's just my reasons for it. But you um, brought up a very interesting topic about dishonesty in these dogs as far as the person studying out their dog with the pup back agreement deal. And something we didn't discuss, when you do that, hey, man, she had the puppies. It was only three. They had no, oh, you said last week she had seven. Yeah, I lost some puppies. Okay. Meanwhile, you find out that those puppies didn't die. She had a litter of six. <laughs> All wow. of them were fine and healthy. All of them were fine and healthy. No. That's another part of the stud dog things. If you're doing stuff with pup back agreements and things of that nature, um, please, please, you guys who are doing that and, you know, you don't want to get burned, man, Deal with trustworthy people. You know what I mean? Because I, I, that situation has come up several times. How many times have you heard that story, Brad? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, hey, if, if you're going to bank on that, you might as well go ahead. and when, when, when you turn it loose, just say it's gone. 
because you know <laughs> I I look at it like this. If I turn it loose, I already made peace with it. And that why or that way if, if it goes south, I ain't got my feelings all tied up with it, you know. But you know, uh, I was talking to you know some some guys this week that you know that mess with the Bulls dogs, and you know, right now the Bulls dogs is going through uh, uh, what you, what you call a transformation because you know Ronald they got out of the dogs, so people are starting to look for these dogs, and you know. Since I uh, I used to sell a lot of dogs without the outs in them and stuff like that, you know. Uh, a lot of people said I was breeding them too tight. Uh, and it ain't right if I bred it like that. But I found out, you know, a lot when I was breeding it tight, which was the uh, best way to go with them, you know. I seen the good, bad, and the ugly. So... Over, over a period of time, now I know what's good and what's bad and which way I need to go with a pure, uh, a tight red boy's dog. But as we uh, talk about, you know, just uh, the stud fee part of it, is you're going to have people with boy's dogs that you would say, well, I would like to stud this, get a stud you know, off of this dog or whatever. And some people don't even know about doing the AI, you know, how they do the AI. Mm -hmm. Even if they do the AI and they take that female home and they can still lie to you and say that the dog didn't get pregnant. Now, a lot of times when you're dealing with guys and stuff, and they won't. Oh, I didn't even think about that. He, they just try to house the whole thing. They, they didn't even take a, a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a lot of times, jokers will, talk, will call you every day when they're trying to get your your blood right. But once they get the the breeding done, like you said, they won't call. Or won't, the conversation are over with then because they didn't got the dog bred. Now. Uh, say like we said six weeks from now, I'm going to give you a call and I say, man, can you give me a, 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 a picture of the female or can we video chat? Let me see what she look like. Oh, I, I'm, I'm busy, man. I, I, I ain't going to put me off. So, hey, come nine, nine weeks. I mean, nine weeks that went by, almost 10 weeks. I'm, I'm going to give you a call and say, hey, that female should be dropping about now. Uh, can you let me see how she look? Uh, I'm busy right now, man. We out of town. I had death in the family, anything. And sometimes they won't even answer to your phone call. And then, you know, I just seen them. They wait till the mama dog, the, the already the, what you call it, uh, nurse the puppies. And she didn't dare suck back up and all that. Now they're calling you again. God, <laughs> you got some nerves. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey, hey, this thing can get crazy, man. It's all according who you're dealing with. Can you trust these people? That's why, you know, stud fee, uh, some, sometimes it don't work out good. So that was our little add-on to the stud fees, um, what you call we 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 we're not going we're not scared to just go back and catch some information and stuff that we might have missed on the subject so sometimes when we'll do a live and people will reach out and, or Fred will be talking to somebody will reach out to Fred after live and certain things that and you know that was something that we didn't bring up the first time and just for the people that are doing studs or not for the people that are doing studs but the young guys you know you get a good dog people want to breed to them you know what i mean these are the cliffs and valleys that you're gonna get, you're well, gonna deal well, with. Hold, you know? hold up, hold up, Thompson. Now you know that I had a Graham Manny, and you know I had Wolf Nilo. Now both of these dogs yeah. had some age on them. You know what I'm saying? But Wolf Nilo was knocking them down all the way 13 years old. You get Manny that was knocking them down 
till the last day he was <laughs> he was on earth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what I'm saying, you got people that say, Oh, when the dog get around seven, eight years old, oh he is he missing yet? Is he missing yet? Is he missing yet? They 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 put that uh, is he missing thing out there because if they do breed to the dog, that's the that's the thing that they gonna use. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yep. He's missing. He's missing. But the thing is, soon as you back another dog up to him, he, he didn't spit ten puppies. But he missing. Come oh. on, get out of here. Get out of here. I had that happen to me. What? Uh, Manny, before he passed, you know, uh, his last litter was 10 pups. 10 mm. pups. That was his last litter. I got one left off of that litter. Just one left. And uh, I, I, hey, if if he leave, he leave. If he don't, I'll raise him. I'll feed that dog. You know what I'm saying? I like them that, that much. They're good dogs. You know what I'm saying? So, and the way things are right now, it's good to have. Uh, that type of blood close up like that and you know it's like this they not being created no longer you know it, once once they gone they gone you know they gone they gone you That's never get another it, hustle man you know you can put hustle nah. man in there <laughs> 10 times but they'll never be that guy you got an inbred sitting over there That's the closest you gonna get to him <laughs> you know oh yeah man? and look and he get older by the minute. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That, that leads into the, our next our next topic the the in, the inbreeding. You know, uh, we we got into the inbreeding a little bit, but uh, we I kind of wanted to slow it down with the inbreeding just for the young guys who who weren't catching a lot of the 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 stuff that floats around with it. And as far as the inbreeding goes, I got this reputation. Like, I do a bunch of heavy inbreedings. I don't. I did one belly mate brother sister breeding, and that was with Hustle Man to his belly mate sister. I've done half brother, half sister breeding of things of that nature. But as far as the belly mate part, and I'll, I'll reiterate this again the belly mate means that these two dogs came off the same litter. Why is that important? A bitch comes in the heat every six months, roughly, if we just go do a ballpark figure. So every six months, a bitch comes in the heat. So that means a bitch can be bred twice a year. I can breed the bitch to the same male twice and have two litters of puppies. They're the same breeding, but they're not of the same litter. That's why it's the emphasis is belly mate in this situation. I did that breeding pr primarily off of preservation because Hustle Man was on the path of destruction. So it was it was a reality of like, okay, if I want to be able to have this in my program, I got to do this breeding. With these inbreedings, especially the belly mate brother sister breeding, those type of inbreedings, whatever's bad is going to double up. Just as good as something good is going to double up. It's hard coming behind them dogs. And that culling is not primarily going to be by your hand. A lot of it is going to be Mother Nature. When things, everything is going to happen rapidly quick with inbreeding. You're going to see things rapidly fast. So I'm not big on it. I've done it for preservation purposes. And like I said, I just did it once as far as the belly mate brother sister go. But be prepared to do those Prepared to be prepared to see these things when you do those type of breeds. It's going to be jack smack right in front of your face. So before you do them, make sure what you're trying to preserve is working. Because if you have some traits that you really don't like, they're going to come out tenfold, bam, right in your damn face. If you ain't prepared to see that, ah, weak confirmationally built dogs. A la dogs that ain't that mentally stable. You know, you're going to see the worst versions of those dogs. Wow. As far as the wow. good traits that you like. But be prepared to see that. Hmm. And you got to be able to pick between uh, the, the worst of two evils. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that to them. <laughs> yeah. The, the lesser of two evils. evils. 
Hey, <laughs> if, if you have if you have a dog that got an underbite, but everything got a good mind and got a, a good structure and uh you know on the scale of one to ten, she's an eight and a half. And then you got one that's oh uh, on the scale of one to ten, she's a five. You, you're gonna have to pick between, but uh, the one that's a five is everything you, you like, but but it's crazy, and it's doing X Y Z that you know this dog ain't gonna live up but a hot second. And you know I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. Uh, see, cause I knew Boots, which was. Uh, uh, hustle man's grandma. Hustle man's mother, Gra grandma, yeah. It was uh, a dog named Boots. And uh, I I seen her as a pup and seen her grow up. And uh, I seen uh, Boots' daughter, uh, Sheba. And, you know, I, I had some influence on uh, Manny being bred to Sheba, but at the same time, uh, when we bred Sheba to Manny, and we had, I think it was, uh, it was about nine puppies. And Hustle Man wasn't the only animal out of that litter that was uh, the way he was. The the whole litter was shout out to, shout out litter. to Doc Holliday too. Yeah, shout out hey, to Doc. Doc shout out to yeah. Doc. Doc Holiday, boy. Doc Holiday, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then you know uh, the ghost, uh, the ghost of Shiva. She met her demise doing some crazy stuff, just like a uh, hustle man did. And then before all of that, Shiva, she met her demise early. And Thompson, when he saw how these dogs are falling off dead real fast, he said, "Man, it's almost." Like these dogs got curses on them. I said, man, <laughs> hey, hey, then you can sit here and watch these dogs, man, and you say, well, I'm going to wait the next time to do that breeding. You're going to be waiting the next time, and you may never see that happen. It's the God's honest truth. I tell a lot of people, man, you cannot let people dictate what's going on in your yard. Because what's going on in your yard is what you're looking at every day. You're out there. If you're out there with these dogs, like how we out here with these dogs, you see what's going on. You see what's happening. It's, it's, it's every day you're out there with them. You see the temperament. You see the things man, changing. You see. Man, you, you when see. Tom, I, when I, I get. I was the one that called Thompson about coming to get Sheila. She was at my house because <laughs> I had got a daughter off of Sheba bred to something. I forgot what it was. Nilo. It was Nilo. It was Nilo. Because you, so, you had to so pump over the Nilo. The Forte damn Forte, Forte was in the pen with her. And, and, uh, with her. Thompson, Thompson ended up getting Forte. But at the same time, what I'm telling you, it was that little Forte was before her time. She was before her time. And I'm telling you, and she died early. It, it just amazing okay. how these dogs was coming through. They was, and you know, people that say, "Well, I want this and I want that," they don't know nothing about what you had to go through to get these dogs, and what you have to do to maintain these dogs, or what you got to do to uh, keep these dogs living, to be able to own these dogs. Then you say, "Well, <laughs> I'm just gonna sell them to you." Folks on the low because I'm a brother and you're a brother. Come on, brothers. Y'all got to start looking out for, for for our own, man. If you got a brother yeah. out here and he's out here doing his, his his thing with these dogs and you see man, hey, look. Man, pay the man. Y'all got to start getting pay, 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 pay the man. If somebody can supply Something that they're looking for, and they're honest and truthful, and they stand up business. Pay the people what you need to pay them. You know what I mean? Because you pay for what you want. 
You know what I mean? And I, I learned that in dogs the hard way. You know what I mean? You can dibble and dabble with a lot of stuff, but as we alluded to earlier in this podcast, you know, it's a lot of it's a lot of funny characters you meet out here. A lot of them. And like like Mr. Fred alluded to, you don't want to be associated with these motherfuckers. You don't want them knowing where you live, where you keep your dog. These are the, like it's some real ground balls out here in these dogs. So please be cognizant. We talked about it in the last podcast with the bubbles. Your yard being a bubble. Everything's a bubble for me. My family, my yard, my, my property, my house, everything's a bubble. Don't be too comfortable bringing everybody to your bubble. Just like we talked about the sicknesses in these dogs. You know, you let Ashley Larry from around the corner come with his funky ass dog and run around your yard. And now you got all types of stuff popping up on your yard. That's the same kind of way you want to play in the playing field in general when we dealing in these dogs. But also, Fred, we got to do the line breeding, too. We hit up on inbreeding. Um, line breeding, as I talked about the inbreeding, the line breeding is way safer from what I've seen. Well, you know, loose line, to, to me, personally, I, I, it's safer as far as defects and things happening that you aren't really trying to bring out. But go ahead, what you were saying, Fred? I, I'm going to cook up on the... Uh inbreeding first because you did the one with Hustle Man and Sheba, right? Mm -hmm. I, I did uh, Manny to Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. Well, at the time, Manny and Lady Gaga was coming from a place that it was necessary in my eyesight and what I seen. Uh, at the time, of that breeding, you know, a lot of dogs had came from Ronald at this time, and Ronald had already went through some surgeries for, for his heart and stuff. So he had a lot of dogs, old school dogs, that he was letting go of because he had bills to pay. And the thing was, the dogs that he was letting go was dogs that ate. Hey, we don't even see the pets for these dogs as of this day right now. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. those dogs was purchased, but a lot of them didn't live long enough to to be seen. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. when I got my hand on Lady Gaga, and I knew what was going on with Manny's brothers and sisters, I said, man, I got to do my thing, you know what I'm saying? What I think is best for my yard. And uh, I picked and choose which one I wanted out of that litter. Now, I think it was another one that might have been a very good female, and I gave it to my OG. Now, the dog didn't live that long, you know? It didn't live no more than a year. And, you know, she was gone. But I think she was one of the best of the litter. But I end up with uh, which I would call the second best, and that was Tilo. And Tilo was a great dog. She had about eight litters from, for me, eight litters. So the thing with that inbred, I took that inbred and I bred her to a different male every time. And I'm gonna tell you, I started to see different things out of each breeding I did, and mm. I found out which one was the best breeding that I did with her. And from my knowledge and understanding and what I've seen, when I took um, Oh, um, hold on. I got my bad. Hey, Brown's Kennels, you there? Yeah, I'm here, bro. What up, bro? Yo, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, I hope I ain't have you. I hope I ain't have you waiting long, bro. I ain't even see you on the bottom, man. Oh no, nah, so you good? You too? I just popped up. I was just cooking up <laughs> on T T T Lo, and uh, you know, coming off of Lady Gaga. I was just right. cooking up on that uh, about the inbred, and uh, and you said you was you got you got to the best breeding guy. Okay, I took uh. Uh, Tilo and bred 
uh, Tilo back to Bam Bam. Now, Bam Bam came from off Lady Gaga, bred to uh, Abdullah, the butcher. Uh, Abdullah, the butcher. And uh, he was a handicapped dog. And then I got a female out of there. Her name was Shanene. And I bred her back to a grand's man. So if, if you were to look at it, these dogs was predicated real heavy off of Black Reggie. So at the end of the day, the best breed now that I've seen that was coming off of Tilo was when she was bred back to Bam Bam. So mm. the first time I did that breeding, I did the breeding twice. The first time I got all males, I got a dog named Mo. And you remember back in the day, I had got a dog named K. Sir and all that? Yeah, that's I remember years ago. that might have been seven sure. years ago. And, yeah, you uh, told me on the phone, dogs. sir. Breed. <laughs> yeah, I had those dogs, right? And I didn't, I didn't have no females. And I said, man, I need to do this breed again. I got to get females. And that's when I got Honey Child. And so I bred Honey Child back to Manny. And let me tell you, that's that was cook up. <laughs> I mean, it just it just is what it is. I think me having Lady Gaga and breeding her to Manny, I wouldn't have never seen that if I wouldn't have did it. But at the same time, you was breeding pure oils dogs the way Ronald would have bred his stock, pretty much. Well, you get what I'm saying? I had Hustle Man blood, and that Sin City stuff, you know, this is why we were saying one dog changed the pedigree. Because just like Fred alluded to, he was able, and he's doing this with pure dogs, essentially. These are pure dogs. He's doing these breeds that he's just disclosed to you with pure dogs and his path through it. One, one dog is different in my pedigree than the dogs that he is discussing. And that's the dramatic change that we keep talking about. But go ahead, Fred. Uh, well, 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 you were cooking up pretty good on that. And that's a yeah, man, is that one that one dog changed the pedigree thing is true. I mean, just like you broke down Sheba, you saw the difference night and day between Hustle Man. You saw we saw that whole litter, Doc Holiday, all of them dogs. You seen the difference of just having one dog in. We could trace back before you even added Manny to the equation. Just the McDuff influence alone changed the bottom side before it even got to a point where we was putting that boils on top of that. It, it changed it dramatically. I've seen Hannibal. And Hannibal is night and day. That McDuff, that one dog in their pedigree, same two identical pedigrees if you're looking at them on paper, but just one dog difference. It was just night and day. But yo, but go ahead, Brown. About- one thing about when you was breeding that Manny stuff, right? See, what you put on the bottom of Manny really entices it. You know what I mean? Like the females you was using. You know, I mean, look, I had Black Knight. You know what I mean? And um, I also had Bodacious. You know, so you seen what that really brought to the table when it comes to the it changed them. Right. I mean, because mine, when I put my hands on Gaga, you know, a lot of people might not realize Hellboy is off of Gaga, Lady Gaga. Now, he's a zooted dog. Yeah. And like what Fred said earlier, that's a lot of um, the Black Reggie stuff. You know what I mean? Small mm-hmm. dogs. You know, very compact, full of drive. Oh, a lot of drive, man. But you know, you a sucker for that drive, boy. But shit, I, I got, I got, I got both of y'all up here now. <laughs> shit, I got both. Of, I got, oh yeah, I got Brown and um, PBC in here. Man, I'm hearing a lot of shit about these black and tan dogs. I'm hearing a lot of stuff in these streets about these black and tan dogs. I got a phone call that said I seen y'all two at the bear 
at the store buying the bed at 8 o'clock p.m. I got info on these black and tans. I'm hearing stuff in the street that we they crossing the rock wallers. They, they they putting Doberman pinchers in the dogs to get the black and tan. A lot of people are not too heavily influenced on the black and tan. They don't know a lot about it. Most times people say a black and tan dog. Most times a lot of people think of a Sorrel's dog. That's um primarily the ones that you've seen consistently throughout history. But the black and tan is in the Gary Hammond's blood. It's in the Maurice Carver blood. It's in the Sorrel's blood. It's in the Boyle's dogs. How you formulating the black and tans pop up. So since I got two brothers here who've got, I've never personally bred a black and tan, never had one. Uh, these were the, Fred was the first one that I seen in person. And I think now, now that I think about it, you brought Tilo up. That was Tilo and Matt Frank was those two black and tan. And those were the first ones that I seen in person that somebody bred up close in person. Was that? Had, so I had two of them out of that letter. So um, let's talk about these black and tan. I know a lot. I've been to your house a couple times, Fred. You ain't got no Rottweilers or Doberman pinches over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to kick it off? You want? Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. You said Joni, right? When you said Joni, yep. the Sorrells woman, I believe you gonna go back to the place where a, a lot of it was being seen. You know what I mean? Um, mm. The thing is, when it comes to the boil dog, you got to go back to the Cherokee Chief dog. Mm. So, mm. it's some stuff that, you know, you see the, the oil dog and you see the Rottweiler dog, those dogs. That's where it started being seen at. Oh, mm. oh! Mm. So, so, so when we start, I had called you earlier in the week. I had a young man. He just, I don't call his name because a lot of his friends be picking on him if I say his name on, uh, <laughs> on the podcast. So I'm not going <laughs> to mention his name, but he asked me a question. He said, "Mr. Fred." Why? Why you ain't got none of that? All the junior and that uh, that all the blood in your dogs like that. And you know, I got quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? I know it's in Pitchfork. Uh, coming through Thunderfoot because Thunderfoot was a dog that Ronald very select, very selectively bred. He didn't breed uh, Thunderfoot much and uh that's why one reason i was kind of excited to get pitchfork now her name is boyle's pitchfork you don't see pitbull city uh none of that pitbull city stuff on boyle's pitchfork but that dog belongs to me i, don't, I didn't even put me as the owner on it <laughs> but that dog <laughs> is old now that's my dog What'd you say, Fred? That's my dog. That's my dog. And <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. My my buddy Brown sitting right there. And I, I had another partner, one of uh Ronald Boyle's friends. He had uh no name. And uh he was talking about selling no name. Now, no name is one of uh I have substitute uh boil your speech for. And, and both of them come off a high stepper. And half stepper was bred to bad Frank too, and uh, you had a bad Frank. Half stepper was bred too. You had uh, red rum. She was bred too, and you had uh, Johnny boy. She was bred too, and she might have been a half stepper. Might have been bred to somebody else too, but I'm not sure right off the top of my head. But I know those three that high stepper was being bred to. Now, one thing about No Name, Ronald Boyles himself bred No Name a few times. You know what I'm saying? So when they got ready to sell this No Name dog, 
I called my uh-huh. buddy Brown, and Brown said, "Say no more." <laughs> <laughs> hey, because oh, yeah. you know, I'm gonna tell you like this: I I wanted that dog in my little circle of the people that I deal with. You know, and, and Brown went up there, took pictures with Ronald, and uh, he did his breeding with the dogs that he had at home. He come up with the black and tan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's just them strands, baby. Hey, hey, no, hey, we know we cooking up. That's all. Hey, yo, no lie, yo. No lie, Fred. Yo, no lie, guys. Man, I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire, boy. <laughs> I was already joking because I know he was going to say that shit. <laughs> Man. Hey, 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 bro. Now, yo. coming from a place where I don't know about these balls, dogs. I said, bro, don't worry about it. Just just take the time and be patient. And you right. figure it out. And, and then to hear you the way you talk, man, it makes me laugh when I hear you talk. Hey, hey, hey. Talk to no, man. Hey, hey, you're convinced now. You know what I'm saying? Man, hey. hey. I, I, I don't know how to boost you up. I don't know how to blow. Hey, hey, Thompson, I got guys. Uh-huh. I got guys saying that I, I got people mind blown. I don't got their mind blown. I just trying to share some of the knowledge with these people. Some of the stuff that I know. You know what I mean? Not that I know everything. I'm not saying that. But no, nah, man, I like to say, I like to, I like to say public man, I appreciate you because a lot of people don't know Mr. Fred is a very busy man. And he could be doing a lot of different stuff. And you know, he he takes his time, which is very valuable. And he's up here cooking what he's been cooking with me consistently for the last couple of episodes. So I just want to say thank you again for sharing your knowledge. Because, you know, I came up under you, a big part in these dogs. So when I seen what was kind of going on and stuff, I thought, man, so a lot of the information you gave me over the years, because there's been plenty of times you had to pull my collar and say, yeah, chill out. You know, and I appreciate that. And just having... You know, you being able to speak because some of this information, like I said, early in this podcast, this is for the young guys coming into the dog. This may some of this information not be maybe intended for a seasoned dog man. Yet again, if you're a seasoned dog man, you know, you, you really ain't searching for information because you're supposedly seasoned. So this is for the young guys. So go ahead, y'all y'all go get finished cooking up. I just want to reiterate that again well, in the podcast. Well, I, I, I had got off the point about the black and tans. Now, the black, finish cooking. the black and tans, uh, I noticed uh, uh, Boys Bad Frank, he has that gene or that trait that throws the black and tan. Okay? Now, Brown did breedings on his yard but didn't come up with it because he wasn't predicating dogs that had certain dogs in it. You know what I mean? But right. soon as he went back to nah, Ronald Ball's stuff, front, nah. boom, there it was. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to say it like this. I had a, a son off of this no-name dog that Brown has, that he owns right now. His name was Kobo. Now, earlier, y'all hear me talk about Honey Child. And Honey Child came off of Bam Bam Bread back to Tilo. I took Honey Child and bred Honey Child to Kobo. I didn't get the Black and Terrence on those. But I had bread Honey Child's, it wasn't belly mate brother, but it was what we call a litter mate brother. It's a litter mate brother because Honey Child is a lot younger. Mo was about two to three years older than Honey Child, but they had the same mother and father. You understand? So when I took Mo and bred it to a daughter off of Bad Frank, they didn't get any black and tans on that. But when I bred a daughter off of Mo 
and uh, bad Frank's daughter to Kobo, boom, there you go, Black and Terrence again. So I got two. Mm. I just had two. They four weeks old off of this female. So the mm. thing is, it's the recipe that you use it. And like we said, pure boys dogs, right? If you didn't buy this dog from Ronald Boyles, you don't have a pure Boyles dog. You got a Boyles bred dog. Boyles bred and pure Boyles dog is two different things. You get a Boyles dog from Ronald Boyles, and what Ronald Boyles breeds his dog a certain type of way. He does not do any inbreed, period. He do half-brother and sister breeds. Half brother and sister breeds. That's what he does. And guess what? When he does half brother and sister breeds, he keep coming up with the best dogs the United States have ever seen. The Bulls dogs. And the Bulls dogs are out here making their own noise. We ain't the ones making the noise for these dogs. These dogs are making their own noise. Because... Hey. I would tell you, I had all kinds of dogs in my yard before I bought uh, Lady Gaga. But when I got Lady Gaga, she changed the whole yard. And guess what? I can walk in my backyard right now. I see Lady Gaga all over my yard. Attitude and all. Because she was had a nasty one little bit. attitude. You hear me? And I got, I got dogs. Bitch. They would have to be her great, 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 great grandkids. And they still have that same attitude like they had when Brown had her on his yard. Yeah, girl, you had a lot of dogs that looked like Lady Gaga, so I'm like a whole lot, man. But like that was your said, foundation, bitch. That was right. that was like because that was because I had that, I had the privilege when you remember when me and you tried to bring her to crush and you left her at my house. I'm telling you about three days later, I was calling Brown like, yo, you got to come get this bitch. Like, immediately, man. Like, yo, it, this, this ain't it. That was a mean, hateful little bitch, man. God. Damn, that was... <laughs> wow. That was the days, man. That was the days. <laughs> 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 yo, oh, hey, but, shit, but, but like 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 what Fred Fred said, yo, to elaborate. I mean, the boy used dogs are making a name for themselves, man. Like, you know, at first it wasn't, but now it is. You know what I mean? Like, and you gotta salute to everybody that, you know, put their time in with these dogs, like Ronald, you know. A lot of old heads, Lewis, you know, Miss you know, Lomans, you know, it's it's a lot of boy, it's blood out here, you know. But you you always got to do your homework, man. You just can't jump into this these dogs and not knowing, yeah. like you talk, you know, like with the black and tan stuff, like 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 Fred said, yo, like when I went back even further, I pulled something back. Pull something forward, you know what I mean, and, and not only so that, watching the back to the front. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, like I said earlier, they on fire because I mean, like the dog get the puppy from, you know, how I say yo, like it's fish grease hot, it's hot, you know what I mean? They hot, they young and hot. <laughs> they young they and hot. Full of lightning. Man. I guess that's gonna lead it. That's gonna lead into our next thing, man. Um, ide identifying what you enjoy. You know, you gotta right. enjoy. It. You got if you if if you like the pure form of it, because I what we alluded to, Walker Lewis, and you know Fred, you you you've done business with Lewis. You know everybody has their own swing on it, and it is different. You know what I mean? You know, I. You got to feed what you enjoy, what you like. You know, some people lean towards preservation. You know, a lot of people are strictly fans of red boy dogs. 
dogs or boils dogs, you know? They that's what they deal with. They're not that's their thing. You know what I mean? You have those type of people and you have people that like to put their own mix on it. They like to put their own input on the breeds due to outcrossing with other bloodlines and stuff. So, you know, identifying what you enjoy is a key part in, in, in this. I feel left out because, you know, I, I haven't hit on no black and tans yet. But yet again, my program is different. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of similar dogs, but the different outs that I have, I'm probably not going to hit that trend. So all of this, you know, take all of these things into account. You know, one dog changes the pedigree. You know, I had the fellas on here. They're constantly telling you, you know, it's an art to this thing. You know, Fred just went through a whole process of breeding. I mean, a whole process. And I literally watched him do this and identify what he was looking for, got it, isolated, trapped it, locked it in, put it in a headlock, you know, however you want to work. It can't be done. Right. It takes time, patience, and dedication for the young guys out there. You can get the dogs you want. Can, it's just about say, how much you're going to put in it. Can I say something? Cook up. Uh, if if y'all look, I put that little black and tan dog that's on, on my um, avatar. Yep. <clears throat> that's my granddaughter's little puppy. Well, he's not a mm. puppy. He's a grown dog. He's three and a half years old now. His name is Loki, right? Now, I'm going to tell you how I achieved Loki. I achieved Loki from the inbred. From the inbred mm. of Manny to Gaga. I achieved that black and tan. Now, when you called me earlier in the week, you said, cook up on the black and tan. So, you know, I called around to some of the heavy hitters that I knew that, you know, been into these dogs, boys' dogs for a long time, and Ronald himself, but I didn't get to talk to him about the black and tan, though. <clears throat> but uh, I had to come up with my own experience. I had bred Tilo, which came off of Lady Gaga, the Manny, and I bred her to about, like I said, about at least seven different dogs, right? And a guy came over to my house. You may remember this, Thompson, the Olympia, Olympia Kennel, right? Well, Yeah, Olympia Kennel, Kennel, yeah. Shout out to Olympian, Olympian Kennels. I mean, Olivia Kennel used to be over here with me chilling. And he said, man, I got out of dogs years ago, but you about to make me get back in the dogs. So he started purchasing dogs with me. He said, but I want to help you achieve what you're trying to do, Fred. I said, okay, that's what, what I want to do. I want to start taking all of uh, Tilo uh, offsprings and start putting them back together. Mm. I want to start doing half brother and sister breedings off of Tilo. And that's what I did. And that's what I got. <laughs> oh, hey, yo, that's a beautiful thing, man. And see, that's a plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? You had and a look, plan. Look, yo, I got two out of that letter. So it was him and another one. It was two in that letter. Mm -hmm. yeah, that dog, look, I'm looking at that picture of that puppy. Oh, that, that, <laughs> that dog, man. That dog is that dude shining like glass, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's something else. But the thing is, Thompson, smart. Hey, I, I he'll play with the puppies. But he got a, he got a ruthless side to him, too, now. But he, yeah. he get along with the females, with the ladies. You know what I'm saying? He get along with the family. But he will buy the that, that that is out of place on my yard too. Now, if you come over here and, and he see you, he, he like, hey, who is this guy? Hey, you don't supposed to be there. You'll see another side of him too. You know what I'm saying? He's that smart. He's that smart. I just had a whole, I had a whole forty minute conversation with Miss Winchester talking about intelligence and dogs and. Breeding that stuff, man. You know, shit. I was. I'll tell everybody about my um, 
my experiences all the time, man. You know, I'm 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 very I'm not so I'm not looking for an astronaut, but you know, as far as intelligence and balance and stuff, it, it weighs heavy on my program right now as far as the things that I've been trying to do and get done, man. That intelligence counts for a lot, man. Especially, you know, just overall maintenance with some of these dogs, man. You know, shit. That is destructive ass dog. But we got we got to cook up on these pups too, man. You know, um, I've been getting a lot of questions about the pups this spring. A lot of people who are doing certain breeding, they landed, they're asking for advice about when do we allow pups to actually be on the dirt and the ground. You know, um, that seems to be a major thing. You know, everybody always is, is commenting. They see my puppies. They kind of go from the high box. They're born in the high box, and then when they get too big for the high box, I put them in a five by ten kennel. And then when they get too big for the five by ten kennel, I put them in a ten by ten kennel in the back. And then after the ten by ten, I'm pretty much one of my time nine times out of ten when my litter gets to that point, those are pretty much the keepers. And then I rotate them onto the chain. But that was the cook up. You know, people asked about what age you do. Me personally, I'll go ahead and start it off. My pups don't really land on the ground until about like eight months. That's roughly me. You know, sometimes you do some tightly bred breedings and sometimes we talk about the tightly bred breedings and certain things. You know, when you're dealing with heavily bred dogs, sometimes when they're young, they are susceptible to things a little bit more than certain dogs that are bred a little bit more cleaner. So with me, I just was always a stickler because it's a lot of shit on the ground, especially out here. I'm at be broken glass and all types of stuff that you may find in the dirt or stuff. I try to keep my puppies off the ground. Controlled environment. We talked about the bubbles. I'm an eight month kind of guy. You know, I had a situation I was living in where I primarily had kennels. I had more kennels than chain spots. So I would kennel puppies even longer. They, you know, just the living situation that I was in at the time. But I'm an eight month kind of guy. Frank, how you rock on it? Well, um, I, I'm I'm similar to you. Um, I know I keep them up in the hot box till they're about twelve weeks because they ain't coming out of there till they get all three of those shots they supposed to have. <clears throat> and then, like you said, um, with me, I got concrete that they can be on. And uh, lately, I've been um, building brew boxes, <clears throat> and I've been selling those for six fifty. So I, I got different styles of brew boxes, and I've been um, building the ones that got the space in the middle, so I can put two different puppies in it. Because the last breed I did with the Manny pups, they started not getting along around I want to say eight weeks, the nine weeks. I mean, it was like it was a breakdown in the in the process. I either had to <laughs> I had to hurry up and get and make moves. You know what I'm saying? So uh, everybody had to be by themselves uh, all the way through the cold weather. So it was it was a hassle. I ain't I ain't kidding, man. A lot of people don't understand when you got American pit bull terriers. It's all according to what you're breeding for. If you're breeding for dog aggression, let me tell you something. Hey, it can break down on you real fast. Real fast. So you got to be prepared. You got, what, uh, uh, nine weeks before you have the puppies. Then you got another six weeks after she have the puppies to, to make sure you got X, Y, Z, ready for these puppies to hit the ground and to be taken care of properly. And, you know, I've seen guys that don't do that and uh, they just have a mess. And a lot of guys, they'll sit there and let, let it be a process of elimination. But I think that was one, one of the stupidest things that ever to be, you know, to do. To sit there <laughs> and not do your due diligence on uh, uh, what you're supposed to do with these animals because you're really just sitting there destroying uh, 
good, good, a good, good product. I mean, it just I, I yeah for the, for the for for the for the sick individuals out there. Yeah, don't sit there. Let don't think because you sit there because we got to teach the youngins. There may be some young one out there that's thinking that's what it is. If you're listening to this podcast, sit down and listen to what I'm telling you. If that's happening, do not think the one that lives was the game is won. You fool. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just, just, just don't 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 think you got the grand champion because that was the last one that lived. You, you idiot! Don't do that. <laughs> if they're hurting each other, separate the puppies. Man. I mean, simple as that. If they're hurting each other, we sat here and we discussed. And shout, hold on, before I cook up, shout out to Welcome Dale Ram. Shout out to Eli Zachary. Shout out to Gas and Go Kennels. You pain. I mean, I appreciate all y'all brothers swinging through. And, and um, student of dog, student for life dog training, I appreciate you brothers for swinging through. Samurai Kennels, please check out all of you guys in the chat. Please check out each other's channels. You know, each one teach one. You know, we all we all here trying to bend the breed and keep these dogs alive. But um, as I was saying, do not sit there and let them dogs rip each other apart thinking you're doing something. That is the most ignorant thing you can do, and don't do it, man. I mean, sometimes they just click early and they don't get along. But trying to prove something or who's better or better at eight weeks, six weeks, ten weeks, <laughs> you know, you, it, it's you, you, why waste okay. your time. Hey, I, I I got to say at the beginning because you know this this conversation on on the podcast is for. Uh, new new beginners and and things of that sort, and uh, you know, uh, I'm an older guy on this podcast. But the thing is, I'm on here because I want to share some of the things that I went through, you know, uh, owning these dogs, and not that I wanted to have something to go out here and be the baddest thing on the block with them. It's just a passion for seeing a better dog than what I started with. The mm -hmm. thing is, even if I don't go to the box, if I don't take my dog and do X, Y, Z with it, and go to, uh, you know, the way that they have went in the past uh, 40 years ago, this is 2023. 20, 20, uh, you got to change with the times. These dogs, a lot of them ain't never going to see a box. And the way that these people are taking these dogs and destroying these dogs and not taking care of your business and being around a bunch of foolishness, you're going to risk uh, your freedom and everything else just to own American pit bull tear. Not I. I I'm, not, I'm not that guy. And a lot of guys that I asked about, you know, coming on the podcast and being a part of it, you know, they would never do it. They, they're just not going to do that. But, you know, me and Thompson talk all the time, and I enjoy Thompson, and he invited me to the show. And uh, I, I feel like I got something to say because – you know, I don't want to see a lot of young people getting into these dogs and stuff and they going the wrong way. You, you're not really listening to the, the good, uh, the, you li listen to the bad guy on, the, on one shoulder and the good guy on the other shoulder you're not listening to, you know. And uh, a lot of times, like we talking about these little puppies and stuff, starting up early and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you, when I first got into these American Pit Bull Terriers, I didn't know that them dogs would be so... I mean, it's it's a whole... Evil. Hey, they, they, they can be some evil little bastards I mean, at an early age, man. You never early age. imagine. I, I mean, okay, I'm going to give you for instance. It was a hurricane down here in North Carolina. And, you know, no lights, no electricity, all this. And so everybody is outside. 
and you know, I got pit bulls and stuff like that. And this summer, I had did a breeding, and uh, it had some little puppies out there, and everybody out there eating a dinner and stuff, and something break off. And when they break off, you know, my wife went out there with the broom. Stop that. Stop that. <laughs> like, oh, Lord. Hey, it turned into <laughs> a massacre out there. It was blood everywhere. My wife looked at me and said, what in the world? You got fight dogs. I said, oh, Lord. She said, yeah, every black dog you got, they got the goat. <laughs> and let me tell you. Them dogs had to go. You hear me? So, yeah. hey, man, don't sit there and do these breedings and you ain't ready for them. Don't sit here around guys talking this stuff about the dogs and thinking you're going to be the next great whatever. Reading all these books and stuff like that. Trying to bring all these old dogs back that you done read about that people sit around the bar and talk about. The thing is, the dogs that are out here right now and you sitting in your backyard breeding, you got people on the YouTube channels and stuff thinking, well, they got three people that they know that got the best dogs in the world. And if you didn't get them from these three guys, you ain't got none. But, you know, I'm going to tell you like this. That's a lie. If you got American Pit Bull Terrier and they have been out here for a long time and the blood ain't going nowhere. It's really not unless you got somebody sitting there doing some stupid th stupid stuff with them like out crossing them with like like you said Rottweilers and stuff like that and, and breeding them with um, Doman Pitches and stuff like that. If we were really doing that to get a black and tan dog you know, hey, that would be something else, but that's not what's going on. You got people that breed these dogs, and you want to be successful in these dogs, and you got to do your due diligence to have sense enough to uh, take care of the dog properly. I, I used to hang around guys early on when I got Lady Gaga, before I got Lady Gaga. You know, I, I had uh, dogs that didn't even have paperwork, but I took care of the dogs. I always did take care of the dogs, even when I was a young boy uh, uh, coming up. But the thing is, you see people with dogs now, they they not putting in the time. They're not putting in the work. And I was talking to an old, older cat today. He said, Fred, I don't know what, what you're really trying to do. Are you really trying to bring these guys up to what we used to do back in the day, he said, you might as well go ahead and stop because they're not going to get that. Uh, we're like dinosaurs now. You know, us older guys sitting here talking about these dogs and stuff of things that happened in the past. You know, they didn't happen in the past, but it's a new generation out here now. And the dogs that we had back in the past they gone, man. They they gone. The new dogs that are coming in now, you know, you got still that type of blood out here, but you got to be out there in that lane to be able to see those kind of dogs. And I, when I say that lane, I mean it's not nothing pretty. Now everybody not going to be able to go out there and risk their life for a dog fight. Uh, spend. Uh, hundred thousand dollars on the dog fight and stuff like that that ain't what we're talking about on this podcast this podcast is for giving people knowledge just to take care of the dogs of american pit bull terriers of the day without all the extra not taking care of the dogs not doing what you're supposed to do to take care of the dogs and We'll see at the end how how it's going to work because some of the puppies that we have nowadays, they're not going to come out as good dogs. They're not. Mm. 
That's too. Uh, we're gonna cook up on that too. Um, Brown, what you gotta um, what's the cook up on your when you put your pups on the ground? We didn't get to you. Oh shit, he dropped out. My bad. Oh hold on, he's back. Uh. Hey, what's your yeah. cook up when you drop your when you put your when you put your whole you wait till you put your pups on the ground normally. Shit, normally I'll probably do about 12 weeks. Like, the main thing, get them shots in, make sure they're dewormed. And not only that, when when yeah, everybody use different tactics, like I use wheat scraw. You know, I don't let, like literally just let my puppies be on the dirt itself. You know, it's extra cleaning, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a lot of stuff out here coccidia, um, you know, parvo. So, you're a 12 week guy. All right. Oh, shit. We go. We also got to cook up on this, too. Um, I had an add on for this. This was about the toys and stuff. Well, not nor less the toys, but workout equipment and certain things that people see me do. <laughs> but um, the main thing is not leaving shit out with these dogs. Um, I use a spring pole. I, I got mobile spring poles that I can move around my yard and hook it up so I can work certain dogs without even having to take them off the chain. But I do not leave this stuff out. You know, we had a lot of people hit me up about dogs eating stuff. Um, just like Fred alluded to with these, these type of dogs, man, they can't be left unattended with shit. No matter how indestructible you think it is, um, please, the raw, the any type of tug toys, even down to the raw hide and stuff. I know people like to leave the the, the spring pole hanging up for the dog to have access to it. Twenty four. You really don't want to do that because at some point that dog rip off a big chunk. Some of these dogs are silly enough to swallow the craziest shit whole. Big chunks of rope from the the cotton ropes that you hang up for the tug toys. These dogs will eat that shit in a heartbeat. So. Please, just to save yourself a headache, um, since I was asked this question, the, the peroxide is what you use, is what I personally use. That's a home remedy. It's something that can be purchased over the counter. You, I usually shoot about five cc's. I put it in the syringe and shoot it down the dog's throat. I had to do this to save two dogs on my yard, the Sorrel's dog and um, Proud Mary. You know, back in the day, I used to have the tire. I used to leave a tire up, and them dogs would have access, and one day Mary actually broke off a chunk of the tire and ate the shit. And fortunately, I was able to feed her, and I noticed she can't eat her food, so they are not like her. Usually, you got to, like, damn near kick her out the way you pour it in the damn bowl. But I knew she didn't want to eat, and I, was, I saw the tire, and I said, oh, shit, she ate a piece. And, you know, she was a young, this was, she was a puppy. But I did the peroxide. It immediately makes them vomit. And she vomited a big hunk of rubber up. You know, if you can get to it before it gets to the intestine, you're in a good situation. But once it gets into the intestines, it's a goddamn disaster. I can just tell you that now. So if you think your dog ate something, the peroxide works. Um, Fred, you got any horror stories about leaving shit out? And <laughs> hey, it, it's the same thing with um, if you go to the store and you buy those pig ears. Ooh. You know, Ooh. just something when you buy them pig ears, don't don't do that. Because uh, some of them dogs can't break them down. And first thing they want to do is chop, chop, chop and swallow. And it don't work out for them. Yeah. It, it, it some, could be bad. Some dogs can't break down the bones, so that's yeah, I, Brown, you got a horror story? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I'll put it like this. Like over here, my dogs usually, like I don't have too many dogs that's like, you know, that dumb, but the ones that I do have, yo, you can't leave no buckets out. You know what I mean? 
I mean, you might go back there and see somebody yanking a doghouse, you know, and and you got to watch out for all of this stuff. I mean, I got, I mean, I got dogs that when they get excited, they bust roots, and you know, even with busting roots, you gotta, you gotta check these dogs' mouths because you know some dogs might have splinters in their gums, and you gotta pay attention to a lot of this stuff, man. Wow. That's yeah, great, too. I yeah, had one uh, the other day, ate right through. I built a special doghouse out of two by sixes, the whole doghouse. And uh, I put uh, four by fours in the front, you know. And I said, well, this this should be hardy enough to uh, stop all that, you know what I mean? Joker ate through the four by fours. <laughs> and uh, ate through the ate a, a hole through the sidewall of the two by six. I said, "Whoa, man!" Y'all you know, won't come to the light. I keep trying to tell you, boys. I didn't got the, I got metal barrels to sell. I got metal barrels to sell. Y'all hey, come to the light. <laughs> hey, hey, it's just incredible. If you ever get to see how how. How these dogs can be. I mean, it, it just uh, the coloring process or the picking and choosing. Uh, you know these these guys that go around and they like at the beginning of the show you were talking about. Uh, I think you might have uh, alluded to it when you called me earlier before we got on the podcast about guys that running behind uh, different dogs and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I want the dog. I want something off of this dog. I want something off of that dog. But they don't realize every time you go get another dog, you, you're you getting different traits from different, you know, lines and stuff. And if you don't know nothing about the lines, you're going to find out. And once you start putting these dogs in your yard, I mean, it can it can be really hectic just trying to figure out what's good and what's bad, you know. Because some of the things that you know to be good might not be good in another line. And some of the things that we look at to be bad in the boys' line is good with the buck dogs. It might be good with the red. I mean, it just you got to know your dogs, man. I mean, and you can't sit there and say. Everybody knows everything about these dogs because they don't. <coughs> they just don't. Learn something new every day. So I, I want to emphasize what Brown said too, because I didn't even you know, cross my mind about those dogs that bust. Thank God I really don't have the tree root situation over here like that. But you know, I, I've been at old spots where I had the tree root situation. Yeah, you know, you gotta be if you notice them dogs is doing that shit. Like Brown alluded to, you got to be checking their gums for splinters. And, I mean, that's how you get all type of oral infection, abscesses in the wow. mouth and all of that shit. Wow. All that shit, you know. The, the shit, causes, it ends up costing you in the long run. You know, we talk about preaching to the young brothers about preventative maintenance. You know, when you see them dogs doing, like Fred Luther, he's building different styles of dog houses. That's what you have to do to accommodate some of these animals. And that, that's why when we talk about, you know, being all in with your dogs and being accountable for the type of dogs you have. You know, if you know you got some, I got about seven knuckleheads out here like that. I'm going to keep it on about seven of them. They just raw and uncut metal <laughs> barrels, all that. I had to go in and customize their area for them to stay alive. That's how it is with these dogs. And you got to be prepared for that. You may have a setup in your mind that you think is like, yeah, this is, no, it's going to be what that animal dictates if you want to keep and feed that type of animal. It's going to be what they dictate. So you're always going to have to be making alterations. Like Fred just said, he's building high boxes. He got them for sale. At the end, man, please I, don't let me forget for you to shout out your social media so brothers can get at you because I've been preaching about these high boxes for a while. You know, I build my own. I'm not building for the public. I just build my own personal one. But 
I'm gonna be breaking down and driving up here and buying one from me, Frank, because I'm tired of cutting lumber and all that shit. My name ain't Lumber <laughs> Jack out here. But, you know, it, that's a good alternative to the chains. If you're in a situation where chains are an issue, you know, the high boxes are a good idea to go along with the kennels that you could purchase as well. You know, these are all ways to not have your dog tethered. As Fred alluded to in this, in 2023, we are in the age where you're going to have to adapt to shit. Yeah, Either right. you're going to uh, you're adapt or you're going to die. But, but there's the nobody who's going to keep things current for you. Well, it's <laughs> Go ahead, like, Fred. When you first came up here, I know I had about 15 dogs on that straightaway, straight down the line, 15 of them. You know, and that was what? 12 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. None of them dogs ain't on chains no more. I mean, time to change, you know, uh, the neighborhood to change, you know. It's and you don't even have an anti, it's not even an anti-tethering law, which you, you just no, was up no. on, you was just, you just proactively was like, I'm no. getting my dogs off the chain. Now he's like, you was like, I'm not even dealing with it. Go ahead. Well, the, the thing is, you got neighbors, right? And you got the neighbor's dogs. If you got your dogs and they not inside of a, a privacy fence and you just got them, you know, out here on the land, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just had them out here on the land. It's on my property, you know what I mean? And dogs mm -hmm. shouldn't be running through here. Coyotes shouldn't be running through here. Uh, foxes and wolves and <laughs> shouldn't be running through here. If you run through here, you know you're asking for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, that, hey, that's how it was back then. But as time went on, I seen, hey, this ain't good. Because, you know, like you, we started off this uh, podcast thing with uh, checking your uh, chains and stuff like that. And uh, Yeah, you know, I, was, I, was replacing, I was replacing tiles, but go ahead. Well, you know, I I used to, we was talking about the puppies and uh, when do you let the puppies touch the ground, right? So mm -hmm. I was do, I was doing my thing about you know, uh, keeping the puppies up in a brood box till they got about twelve weeks, and then uh, like you did, I I would bring them down to the concrete, let them be in the concrete thing for about till they got at least six months, you know? And oh. so after they got six months to seven months, they start getting their hangers in their mouth to start getting their teeth. And, uh, you know, if you live in the country, you got to think about foxes. You got to think about uh, some of these birds of prey. <laughs> They'll come out of the sky and dip on you too, you know what I mean? And you got people don't also, know about that hook snatching the puppy up. Man, you got start, birds of prey. They don't know about that. You got birds of prey, you got also you got uh stray dogs. Stray dogs is a beast now because mm -hmm. you don't know what kind of stray dogs is gonna be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even if you take a seven month old puppy and tie him up on a chain spot. He got to be able to survive out there with the big boys. And a lot oh, of people yeah. don't realize if you put a seven, a eight month old, a nine month old puppy on the chain spot, if somebody get off and they owe the dog Yeah, they're going to do them. They're going to do them 30. And I, <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Fred, bro. No, silly I'm, I'm, trying, to I'm trying to tiptoe around a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I'm trying to be honest. It's, it's a, it's, this, is, this is the preventative part. You know, it gets ugly. Even, even with this type of broadcast, it still comes down to the reality of these dogs. And, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, for, for the young brothers out there, because I know how the young brothers is. They got their tie outs. You know, it's certain it's a million ways. The way the ways that'll fail, you'll remember the stuff that you did that failed when you hey, did your tie out. I, I, seen a, I, seen, <laughs> I seen a guy the other day, and he's a friend of mine, and I was looking at a picture that he sent, sent me of a dog that he had tied out. And you know those hooks that you got, they they small at the bottom and they get fat at the top, and you can squeeze yep. it, and you can squeeze yep. it. 
and uh, and it come loose like that. Four locks. Yeah. I think. What you call it? Yeah. Four, four locks. Four That's locks. a bull yep. lock. Well, you can call yeah, it. Yeah, look, it look, it look, it look, like, it look yeah. like a, it's a, it look like a little horseshoe, but it got a little, it's a spring loaded in the front. It's like a bigger version what, what, of the ones that, you would have you on your keychain. You know what you would call that? You know what you would call that? You would call <laughs> a that, disaster. You would call that trouble in the makings, baby. Because I'm let me cook. Let, let, <laughs> he gonna come home, and somebody gonna be hot real bad. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna cook on that too because it's a perfect time for this part of the chain spots. Because I opened up the podcast, I was telling people I was replacing chain spots. I got kennels and chain spots. Pretty much how the dog is is how I kind of rock. If he does better and is more calm and stable in the kennel, I will put a dog in the kennel. If the dog is more comfortable on the chain spot, I will keep the dog on the chain spot. That's how I operate. Dogs are where they are most comfortable and I can easily maintain them. But about what Fred is talking about, these latches and locks and all of this stuff that you see, because I don't critique other people's chain spots, but I, 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 I'm a chain spot guy. I check my stuff. All of that spring-loaded crap that you're using, and I, I don't want to call it crap and offend nobody, but what you're not worried about is the actual spring itself. The spring is what rusts first before anything on that apparatus that Fred, those two bull snaps that you could just pull down and let go and it, it locks right back when you let go. That's what rusts first, that little spring inside. Once that spring is rusted, it just falls open. There's no tension on it to keep it closed. So that's why when, people, when you see people with those type of tie outs, we kind of stand back and secretly like, hey, bro, you're going to have a problem real, real soon, bro. That uh, stuff there is it, it's the spring. The inside spring is not the thickness of the metal of everything else that you're looking at. It's a little cheap-ass spring. That after about four months, it's rusted. You'll notice when you pull that thing back and you let go, it doesn't snap back the same way. It was when you first bought it. But go ahead, Frank. Yeah, uh, the the safest thing I, I, that I know to be true. I used to even use the the things that uh, you know, like if you know, safety clips that be on the yep. on the, those vests and stuff, and they like they they really hardy, really strong, you know. Yeah, that's but, a big ass spring, and it's yeah. locks. It's not even the spring doesn't even keep it closed. It actually locks. I use. I know what you're talking about. He's talking. It's a construction harness safety clamp. They use them at my job as well. When they disband, because after every certain amount of um, year or so, you got to get or two years, you get rid of them or whatever. But you, that that harness that he's talking about is yeah. the construction. It's on the lan. It's called a lancet, and it's two of them on each end of the lancet. Yeah, that's and right. That's what he's describing. But yeah. go ahead, Fred. What you're talking about. And, and that that'll get you that'll get you cooked up too, that'll get you messed up too. So hey. the only thing I found that that that'll last, but you got to change it out too, is get one of them pure or uh, one of them round circles, and put the collar mm -hmm. through there, and see, put the collar through oh, there. Right. Yeah, put that collar through there, and uh, uh, the, the only way you get that dog off is taking this dog collar off. And sometimes you can't use one collar. You got to have two collars because you got smart dogs that that one collar ain't going to be sufficient. Yeah, them smart ones that can figure out that they when they back out. Yeah, yeah. These are all the things that, they, hey, man, it's hard having these dogs. That's why hey, know, like, Brother like, Brown <laughs> is up here. Fred's up here. You know, that's why we say we're adding dogs. Because it right. takes a lot. A, a no, decent tie-out could cost you $125. If you're doing stuff brand new, a whole tie-out with quality chain, quality swivel, quality links. And like like, like with me, I got um, brew boxes and I got uh, concrete pins with, with the chain link around them. And I also have the uh, chain run. Because you know they got to get exercise, so like uh, back in the old days, you had more dogs that was on uh, 
on the chain spot. But some places you're not able to have them chain spots no more. So you got to come up with a different way to get your dogs exercised. So, you know, uh, you got to come up with a plan. That's all I can tell you. Hey, yo, it's easy easy to to make a mistake, yo. Like, like we talked about <laughs> earlier. Yeah, it's easy to make a mistake because, you know, you might have a puppy that's, that's live and, you know, you put it on a chain and you know, not thinking that you just put this one on the chain, but you ain't checked the rest of the yard. You know what I mean? So you got pride in this puppy, whether you bred it or bought it. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, anything can happen. You know, you got to really make sure your setup is secure. You know, like... Look, Angie, before you start, Yo, even with cages, you know, man, oh, I watch. Man. Yeah, you got some dogs that will climb out a cage. I don't care what cat, what type of cage it is. You know what I mean? That's how smart it is, man. Man, I got a dog right now as we speak. I build a brood box and put the sheet, um, a tin, you know, a sheet of tin, the tin. I put tin on top of the roof, you know, tin, right? She finds where the seam is that I, I connected the two pieces of tin, you know, where it lays at. She finds out where that, that seam is and bites bites the tin till her mouth bleeding and all that, trying to go through the roof. Mm. So, mm. hey, Pitchfork could do it too. She'll rip. She, if she can find a a soft piece of tin where she can put her whole mouth on it, she's going to rip that off. Bloody mouth and everything. So, I mean... You got to you, know you what just your house know is. That these dogs <laughs> they got made up minds. And, I mean, it just... Speaking on the speaking on the kennels, I'm just going to be... You know, people argue about the chain spots and stuff. I don't find nothing wrong with it. It's not. I'm not breaking any laws. There's no anti-tethering in the state that I'm in. So, um, what you call? I'm not doing anything wrong. But I've had more kennel accidents with the kennels than I ever had with the chain. And it's just... I'm just being brutally freaking honest with you. Hey. Either it's user fault because you know when you're dealing with kennels, you're constantly opening and closing doors. Well, you so was it's easy for you to make a mistake. <laughs> you you was talking about those uh, them kennels that you bought from um, Tractor Supply, and I, I was watching you. You bought, I mean, you were buying them kennels from uh, Tractor I'm Supply. I'm like fifteen of, deep. I went like I mean, fifteen deep. And them things cost about four fifty to five hundred. Uh, just yes, sir. Page. Well, now we ain't talking about the deck that you was putting down. That's another right. <laughs> three hundred. So you talking about at least eight hundred dollars worth of product right now? Mm -hmm. And you say times fifteen. Shut your mouth. Keep on talking, and uh, and tell them why you don't mess with that stuff. Because the locks, on, I had one to get up. Get away from me the other day. <laughs> hey, I just knew I had, I hit the, the gate said cling like that. So I, I said, well, she locked and I walked away. And Shit. little did I know that thing was not locked. Man, it's, it's easy use it ever. Because when you're dealing with dogs on your tie out and stuff, unless you're working with them, you're not taking them off or walking them. You, they, they, they on their tie out. When you go to feed them, it's not something that you're going to do. Like I got to unhook them. To feed them on the tie out. No, I walk in, drop my feet or whatever I'm feeding, and I keep it moving down with my yard and stuff, man. But with those kennels, you're opening and closing. And like I said, them green ones, they infamous for you sl slamming it and it drop, and it don't drop all the way. And them dogs hit that door, and that shit, that shit fly open. And you know, now you got to drop a bucket of food, run, go find breaking sticks. It was more shit with them kennels. And I had to have them, and I didn't have to have them as far as tethering, but the amount of space that I had and the amount of dogs I had, they had to be kenneled just for my for me and my neighbors to feel right. I didn't want too many dogs on the chain. It was defense 
too easy to hop. If one of them cut loose, all possibly kill another one, you know. But that was the situation I was in. But it was way, way more drama. And I'm going to tell you now, and I'm going to keep it 100. You know, a little $15 can save you a headache sometimes. That's why I said these dogs always cost money, but security counts. If you're dealing with them kennels or you're in a situation where you've got to deal with those kennels, you want to get that top. I, I found a cheaper, easier way to um, do it. I put um, the deck board, the same deck boards that I run on the floor, I run that around the framing of the top of the kennel so the dog can't climb out. The same deck boards there, you can build the same square frame and strap it. And I like it because my dog still gets sunlight. I don't want nothing that's 24 7 tarp because puppies and dogs, they need vitamin D, they need sunlight. So I just frame in the top so they can't climb out. But for the young bulls, if you know you got something that's a problem in that kennel, you may want to spend that little $15 and get yourself a piece of chain with some type of lock just to go around the door. So for extra security, you get what I'm saying? $15, keep, it may be a little bit more of a pain in the ass when you go in to clean up the heat up. You got to unlatch the chain, then undo the lock. But it, it, it's all hell break loose when that, that door fly open. Man. And ain't nobody home. That's the worst thing. Nobody being home. Hey, and hey. to you guys that don't got $15 to put around there, Hey, get you a good hanger, a wire hanger. <laughs> hey, 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 can I, can I say, say something a little bit deeper than that? Your aftercare better be deep. <laughs> Real deep. I ain't lying. Real I mean, deep. It's terrible, man. If one of them get hurt, it's terrible. Hey, your, yes. your, vet, your vet bill uh, going to be horrendous. Oh yeah, they're yeah. gonna take you. They're gonna take you straight to the bank. So, so you're gonna you're gonna spend. Uh, uh, you uh, go go ahead and spend that fifteen dollars, and make sure you yeah. locked up. Yeah, lock them lock them up. That's just my advice. I know you guys. This the, the American pit bull area is extremely popular in today's climate. I mean, the dogs are more popular than ever. You know, shout out to um seventy eight and them boys, man. You know, everybody's. They're just the love of these dogs, and everybody's coming out. The, a lot of the new kennels are linking up. I watch a lot of them when I got free time. I mean, I enjoy the content. They're real popular. And, you know, people are purchasing these animals. And the worst thing you could do is spend your hard-earned money on these animals, and you really don't know how to keep them alive. So all of right. the stuff that we're telling you is because I'm in a position – Brown is in the position. Mr. Fred is in the position. We don't have a shortage of dogs. We're good. But for the new guy coming in, that you spent your hard-earned money and that's your first dog, and we're telling you these stories not to scare you guys or make it seem crazy, but this is what you possibly deal with with these young dogs, especially these young puppies. And it's a heartbreaking thing to spend your money and can't keep a puppy alive for four months. You know, it's right. a horrible experience. It, and, you not, know, some people got to go through it the hard way, but it's, it hurts. Right, right. Because, I mean, even down to, you know, housing a dog. You know, some people keep these dogs in the house. Me, personally, I don't know how they do it. You know what I mean? But salute to them, you know, because that's their first dog. You know what I mean? So I understand that. And, um... You got to watch everything, man. Puppies eat everything. If you got something on the floor, they might eat it. You know what I mean? Whatever it is. You put them outside, they're going to eat it. You know? And then um, at the end of the day, you know, you got to look at the person that's breeding this dog. Because people not, I mean, me personally, I just don't breed these dogs just to breed them. I breed them to put them in good hands. You know what I mean? And I want to see the dog grow up itself because I know what I gave you, you know. So you take care of your tips and tricks. This is this is all the tips and tricks that we're trying to give the young bulls, man. Because like I said, man, I know you guys work hard for your money. I got you know, I a got, lot of you guys. I got, <laughs> I got one more on that on that puppies and stuff. Uh, uh, whenever you have your puppies, if you got two litters. Or uh, if you go get a puppy from somewhere else, 
and you try to put that puppy within that bubble uh, of puppies that you have, uh, say like you have a, a mother with four puppies, and uh, you take the mother, the mother out, and then you take a, a puppy from another litter or, or another spot and put him in there with that puppy. That's the worst thing you can do. So if you ain't got things built for the extra puppy, you need to start leave that puppy separate. Don't try to uh, put two litters together and stuff. Quarantine. Like Quarantine. Yeah. I, I mean, just told y'all about Ashy, I just told y'all about Ashy Larry and his funky ass dog. You let run around your yard and stuff or walk around. I mean, quarantine, even purchasing new puppies. If you already have dogs like Mr. Fred alluded to, even down to me, I, I get a dog from anybody. I, I trust Fred and I trust Brown. I would feed a dog that they gave me. I know what them brothers do with their dogs and what they put into them dogs. I would feed them, but I'm still quarantining them. when they If I get a dog from anybody, Quarantine. Prior to you getting your puppy, have a bleached out area box, its own food bowl, its own food dish. Everything is isolated where that new puppy is, and you leave that motherfucker there for a couple months. I tell you now, just just don't be too eager to let to be running, letting stuff run around. You may it may look healthy, but if you got dogs already on your yard, man, quarantine any new dogs you bring to your yard. Don't be in a situation where you constantly, this dog came on your yard and you just moved this dog around three, four different spots in the last month and now shit turning up now. You know, it happens quick, just like that. I, I had a guy that got one for me and and he spent good money for the little puppy and he had it in the house for about two months and then... Uh, I guess his wife got tired of dog being in the house or whatever. And uh, he just put the dog out there with another dog that was uh, outside. You know what I'm saying? Didn't do no, no, do, didn't do no extra. Just took him from, from the house and threw him in with a, another dog. It wasn't no more than about two or three weeks later. That, that puppy was dead. He calling me, man, the wow. puppy died. I'm like, now, puppy been gone almost three months, man. What? What you want me to do? I mean, puppy dead now, yeah. but I don't know, man. Everybody, yeah, man, got their way of doing it is, things. It's, the, it's just the truth, bro. That's why we alluded to earlier in a lot of these other podcasts, man. Don't act like you know more than what you know, because right. the littlest question, the, the littlest questions, is when you when people acquire about my dogs. I want to know that you're knowledgeable, but I'm not holding that you don't know everything against you. You feel you feel what I'm saying? So just be honest with your breeder. You know, it's, especially if they're a cool person that stays in contact with you after they purchase a dog, after they purchase a dog from you. You know, if there's something you don't know, don't be too cocky to ask, man. The littlest question, the dumbest question is the one that ain't asked. And it could possibly save the puppy that you just worked and spent your hard-earned money for. So don't be too too prideful in this. I learn I learn stuff from everybody every day. You be a little something. Brown just told you, ass, if you ain't got fifteen dollars, you better go get a hanger. That's real shit. You know, <laughs> some people just hey, don't yo. think like that. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie. You know, the average person that get a dog from me, I mean, they be good guys. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see the puppy grow up. You know, like. I want you to. I don't care if you if you pay for a pay for a thing, you know what I mean. At least make sure you get what you're paying for. You know what I mean. Just because it's, it's hard yeah. on money. Ain't nobody got money to be throwing away. Yeah, some people came into the bulldogs with money, and there's some people that didn't come into the bulldogs with money. Some people who had to grind out the mud and do they breeding. And, and yeah, accumulate right. good dogs, even to get collateral to trade to get other dogs. Some people had to get get it out mud money wise, and there's some people who came in the bulldogs with an ass of money and was able just to buy everything from everybody because they had an ass of money. A lot of people come in on different levels. So for the working man, for the working man, 
who had to like work for everything, you know, this information is for you too. Because I know y'all ain't got no money to waste, man. And I've seen some silly mistakes. Just even to those little black cages, those carrying cages. They're not carrying cages. They dog crates. The black ones with the black piece of plastic you slide in and out. You know, people, you if you're going to use that, I'm going to advise you take the fucking collar off the dog if you're going to use that. Because them dogs will slip their head through that metal, especially that collar snatch. Now that shit's choking them out. Those latches are locked and he can bent the metal where he could just get his head through. You know, those things are uh, a while too. I've seen dogs take themselves out in those setups. So, you know, all of these things you need to be thinking about because the hardest thing is keeping them alive. <laughs> I said, I've been saying this shit for years. The hardest thing is keeping them alive. You can have all the plans in the world that you want to do, but if you can't keep them alive, you, it's, nothing's, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> That's true, though. Yeah, man. But we got a. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, hold on. Fred dropped out. Go ahead. Man, this was a great cookout, man. I mean, this was a, this was a nice this was a nice Thursday night, man. Like I said, we ain't pushing content out every week. Hey, Fred, you about to get your dog beat down. Um, what's your social media? Oh, also, shout out Vag Kennels, man. Check that brother out, man. He got good content. I hope everybody in the chat, man. Um, Fat Farm Rays. Um, everybody. I hope y'all linked up and. Got each other's information. Y'all guys check each other's channels out, man. Y'all go ahead and try to better the breed. Do your thing, man. Like I said, I follow a lot of you guys. This was a solid cookup. Like I was saying, Fred, you about to get your door beat down about those hot boxes now that you opened your mouth that you, you building them shit. Um, what's hey. your social media <laughs> so people can contact you? Um, I'm Fred Davis on, on Facebook. Uh, Facebook only. The, uh, Fred hey man, um also I gotta remind you too, Fred man. Also, man, when I send you the link to this after you done and you got the video, you can type on in the comment section and type your how you exactly do your Facebook. You can type it in there and I'll pin it so everybody can see it. Um I, like I said, you about to be calling. I know you're gonna be pulling splinters out your ass, boy. You're gonna be building some stuff. <laughs> <man>. uh, <laughs> hey, it's fine. But I got I got me a nail gun. I I don't even mess with the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I got a nail gun. Son. I got a nail gun. That they shoot like a twenty-two. Hey man, if your, if your eyes start bothering you, put that motherfucker down. You hey, hear me? I, I, if your I, eyes start bothering you, put that shit down. <laughs> man, my, my buddy Mickey got me a whole face mask thing to put on my face. Oh, word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm. I'm PVC woodworks. <laughs> hey, but you know, it, it's all about trying to. I mean, everybody is trying to move and get these dogs off the chain, but at the same time, they still got to be worked out. You know what I'm saying? But you know, just trying to uh, do some good things uh, on this podcast you can, you... and just try to put out some good vibes with these dogs. I had a. Um, partner that he was from the Virgin Islands. Uh he had a, a little dog named Gambino. Um uh, he uh jumped off the front of the dog house. Uh you know, you was talking about that I believe on the first podcast about jumping off the back of the dog house. But he jumped off the front of the dog house. You know those um them shade boxes we be making? Yeah. Well he built one right but you know, how it tapers off and go to the ground and like the front is open. Uh, yeah. He had a tree right beside the front. And he took a two by four and nailed it to the tree. So the dog came around the back side of the tree and jumped over the front. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and man, th this guy was real close. He's a real close friend of mine and Man, I, I got to make sure he can get him something else, man. He came all the way from the Virgin Islands, stayed over here about a week and chilled out with me about a week, man. And uh, I'm telling you. Yeah, I remember you was telling me about him, man, because I, I posted yeah. that picture of me and you, and he had got the number. I remember that joint. 
But yeah, man. his dog jumped out the front of the dog house. But what he did, he nailed a two by four to the tree uh, to, to keep the dog from moving the uh, the the the, um, the box. Say like if you got dogs and they bite the dog house and drag it all over the chain spot, you know? What I mean? Yeah. Well, so he yeah. said, "Well, I'm gonna stop him from being able to move this dog house. I'm gonna nail this thing to the tree." Now that was a good idea to nail it to the tree at the time. But at the same time, you got to understand where this chain is going to go at. It, it, it can this chain can this chain. chain fly off the doghouse? Right. No. So the way he fixed it, he he made a, a perfect we a weapon to hang the dog. So mm. you just got to be able to think outside the box. Got to watch and everything. Just, and, and, and just like he alluded to, I ain't gonna drag. I want to drag this out, but I want to add on because you brought up something that was real important too. Two things really. With with um Fred doing the high boxes, and we brought up the high boxes, and he he said something. The dogs still have to be exercised. The high boxes could also just be something just to have. You could have your chain tie outs even for the the areas that aren't. Um, you can't have dogs tethered for a certain amount of time. The fact that you have the high boxes there and you can show that, oh, I can take these dogs off the chain and put them in the high box. I let them run around out here on the chain for a couple of hours and I put them back up when I'm when we're done doing whatever we're doing. That's also an alternative just to have it, you know, some extra, you know, you know, it's not even saying for people who have to have it, but it's just an alternative to have on your yard. So when something does happen and people come, they, they can say, okay, look, he's got two really two setups. He's got kennels, cages, high boxes. The dogs don't have to be just solely in this living situation. I just wanted to add that that add that one on there. And the second part I wanted to add, too, since Fred ended this with another horror story, the guys who have the fences where you're in the backyard and, like, your fence is connected to your neighbor's fence. It's one fence, but that's what separates your two backyards. When you have them, if you got those dogs tethered, please measure the length of the chain and if it can actually go over the fence. Because I, I, people seen in my videos, I would have the dog house backed up to the wooden fence where I lived at my, in my old property. I would have that dog house backed up, but I had the axle far enough out where the dog just could get inside the dog house. It didn't have enough because if that chain can go over that fence. That is some real horrible for your neighbor to come outside in their backyard for their cup of coffee and see a dog hanging from the other side of their fence. You, if you feel what I'm saying, that's something real horrific for your neighbor to see. So please, if you're doing that type of setup, make sure the chain does not go over the fence. Push the axle out further with the chain can just, there's enough slack for the dog to get in the dog house comfortably but not be able to run up the fence and fall over the other side and hang themselves. I just wanted to add the second thing. Brown, you got a social media brother. Um, how do people contact you if they're interested in anything you got going on? Yo, y'all can check me out on So So Brown. And that's on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, you know, Brown Kennels, you know, YouTube, Brown Kennels. But, um, now, that's a heavy impact right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's either go hard or go hard. There's a lot of information. There's right. a lot of information for the young brother. I mean, but I'm just, we just yeah. give it, we just throwing it out there for you guys, man. I'm just throwing it out there to save you guys some heartache and some headaches. We all, we all took L's. Fred knew me for a long yeah. time, and he'll tell you one thing Thompson don't like to take no L's. That, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that's one thing about that, me. I don't take that's L's. With, and I hate that's with losing puppies. That was chain accidents. That's uh, that's across the board. He he just is just not that guy. He he's the type of guy if he, he gonna try to do all this pre preventative work that he can get done. <laughs> and uh, I believe that's what he's giving the public right now. He's trying to prevent a whole lot of heartache for people out here just trying to get a quick dog for a quick fix. Because we're living in an age that everything microwave, we're going to go buy the, the fastest moving dog 
that we can find in these American pit bull terriers, and we're going to have the best that ever walk the ground. Yeah, it's good to, to think like that, but, you know, let's sit here and have some common sense about everything we do. Let's, let's try to do that. Do your own work. That's a per- Man, do your own I, I, I just want, and I'm glad that Fred ended it on that note because I named this episode um, Higher, Higher, Higher Elevation of Self. You know what I mean? We, we got to elevate ourselves if we want to make this breed live in today's times with the way things are changing dramatically in front of us, man. You know, we're going to have to elevate ourselves, elevate each other, man. And like I said, that's going to be the conclusion of episode seven. We, we're knocking these things out one at a time, fellas. We're knocking them out one at a time, man. I hope everyone have a blessed one, man, and we'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.